Hi there, my friends. In this video, I'm going to show a quick and easy way to create a little platformer. So let's start by creating a new 3D project. I'll call the project a little platformer and let's create project. While the project is loading, you can go grab the assets that I'm going to be using in this project and you can find them in the description and I'll post it in a Patreon post. You don't have to be a patron to download them, but if you want to support my content, feel free to support it with a Patreon. My new project is loaded. So let's drag that Unity package with all those assets that you could have downloaded on Patreon. And in here, you can see that I got some Kenny assets, some prefabs made, and also some sound effects. These are also RPG sound effects from Kenny's asset package. And I have a little game music that I've composed. Click import and we have all the assets that we need for the game. Now I'm going to be creating a 2.5D platformer. So that is why I chose the 3D space. And now let's go to the prefabs and I've pre-configured some of the assets here. This is the main platform that we're gonna be using and it has a box collider 2D on it. Now let's change the background to be a solid color for our game. So in my game view, I can actually preview it. When you go back to the scene view, it still uses the sky box here, but in the game, you can uh, change to what color you want for it. So let's choose something. Now I can drag the character here and maybe a coin to see how that all is looking. So that background seems pretty good. So that is our starting point now. Let's rotate to view how the camera is viewing. And now I'm gonna select this wall and go into orthographic view to create some kind of platform that we can um, test around with. To make the creation of platform very simple, make sure you have selected global for your movement and you can enable the grid snap and uh, for the grid, I'm going to be using one size it will allow us to move those platforms very easily. So you can select that platform, control D to duplicate it. And uh, while you're holding, you can continue uh, duplicating and moving them. Now, if you need to have a little bit more control than just one unit, you can hold the control down and it will actually move in quarters, which is pretty nice. So I'm just gonna have it like that halfway and then let's create a space where we have to jump over, but let's add something that will prevent us from falling into the ground. And let's actually create a boundary for this little space. Okay, so this is a quick setup. Now let's do the same thing with the coins. So you can hold control to move the coins around and you can duplicate them and place them where you want. So uh, let's drop some more coins right here at the bottom. Encourage our player to go down there and maybe some more coins right here. That's a quick setup. You know, we can clean it up by putting them in parent game objects. So let's call this walls and then let's create another parent here. This is gonna be coins. So for the coins and the walls, we can go and make sure that we have the right tag select and it looks like the assets were imported with the tags. So that is pretty good. Unity package actually includes the tags with the prefabs, but it looks like the layers didn't actually get imported. So for the coin, I guess we can just go and switch it to the default layer. Uh, we're not gonna be using layers in this video. Make sure you save your scene, control S to save. And now let's look at creating the logic for our character to move around. So for the character movement, I'm gonna be using a visual scripting and you can go to package manager and make sure you have visual scripting installed. So under packages, you need to register, search for visual scripting right there and make sure you have it installed. If you see a green check mark, that means you have it installed. If you don't, there's going to be an install button right here instead of remove. I have it installed, so I don't have to worry about that. Select the character and currently for the character, I have an animator uh, set up for it. 
a rigid body and you can actually take a look at that animator if you want so the animator has jump fall sprint and idle states and this is how it's currently set up you can look at each of these transitions and for the parameters that are going to be controlling this i have move float jump trigger and is grounded boolean so that's the animator setup that i have here if we click play the character is going to drop down but since we're not uh, setting any uh, logic here he is just in a false state because um, he's not grounded now for the logic, I'm going to be using the Spock demo units. So these are available for free. If you want to get the full version, you can uh, go ahead and do that. There's lots of units that are available in the full version. But all I'm going to need right now is the free version. And you can find the link to this package in the description. But we're looking for the Spock 1.2.6 demo units. So these are available for free. You can download them and use them in your game and publish them. But if you like the units, consider getting the full version because it has a lot more to offer. So that also gives us the Unity package. So let's drag and drop that inside here. So in this package, I have a small game template here, which is a flappy cube demo which shows how all these units are being used. You can check it out, but you can deselect it to have less things in the project. And the only thing we need are these super units right here. So there's a camera follow, if collide, jump, move, restart scene, resume and touch. And just with those units, you can create fun little games like we're gonna create right now. So let's click import. After import is done, we have a new folder Spock with all the units here. But Let's select our character and for our character, let's add a script machine. So let's create a new graph. I'll call it player graph, save, and we can start editing. But before we add it, let's switch to a tall view. This way we can utilize some of the benefits of using a visual scripting, but I'm gonna combine all of these windows into one. And now we can click edit graph and dock this graph right here as well. So let's go into play mode and start adding the logic. Since I'm using a graph instead of embedded, whatever logic I'll create here, it's actually going to be saved. And if I pause the game, none of those units are going to be removed. First, let's add the ability of uh, for the character to move. So let's find that move unit that we have here. And as soon as we add that, you can see that that character is moving at a certain speed. So if we change to negative two, the character is gonna move to the other side. So that is what the move a unit does. And we have enable on start, and that is why it started. So let's actually enable it only if we press a button. So let's look for on keyboard input, and now look for the D key. On down, we're gonna enable this, and on up, we will disable this move unit. So let me first move this character in the other direction and switch it back to two. So now if we click D, our character starts moving. If we let it go, the character stops moving. So we can do the same thing to the other direction as well. We'll select this, Control D to duplicate and switch this to use A instead. And we want the opposite speed for here. And there you go. Now we can move back and forth with our character. So that is pretty good. Now let's add the ability of jumping because currently our character is stuck in this um, hole and he can't really get out. So let's look for jump unit that we've imported and let's set the force to let's say five for now. And we'll find on keyboard input we'll use on space to jump. And now we can click space and our character is gonna jump. But after that one jump, we no longer can jump because we have a limit set to one jump. And before we can jump again, we need to reset it. And one way we can reset it is by using if collide. So we're gonna use if collide and we're gonna look for if we collide with ground and our boxes are actually ground tag. So on enter, we're gonna reset that. And after we collide, you can see that it actually resets. 
and we can and jump again. So if you want to add double jump for the character, we can switch the jump limit to two and that will let the character be able to get out of that hole that he's currently in. Now currently our character is facing the wrong direction. So what we want to do is change the direction when we're moving. So here on enable, we can set Euler angle of our character. So let's say we're going to be set it to 90 when we're going to be moving into the right. But as soon as we did that, you can see that actually that broke our collider and our character fell down. This happens when you are using 2D colliders. So for our character, instead of rotating our character that has the collider, let's rotate the root of the character. So the character has a child, which is called root, which has all of the bone configurations. So here, instead of doing this, we're gonna get child and the index of zero. So, but our character is a long gone and let's add the ability of restarting this scene. So on keyboard input R for restart, let's trigger the restart scene unit that we have here. So that will restart our scene. Select the scene, click R, and there you go. Our game is restarted. Now I'm going to select the graph from the project view. But by doing that, we're not going to be seeing the flow graphs live activating. So you can see that even though I'm moving my buttons, none of the graphs are being activated. So if you want to actually see those, you have to go and select the character and then you'll be able to see those graphs activated. So that looks like the rotation in the right is working properly. Now let's copy that and set the same thing to the left rotation except with the negative degrees. So there we go. Now we're moving each direction and our character is changing in direction. Now let's fix that issue of our character not being grounded. Probably should have done it uh, the first thing. And I quickly show the animator that it uses is grounded boolean. So let's look at the animator set boolean name value. And in here we're gonna say is grounded. So I'm gonna actually set the boolean first for is grounded and after that we're going to reset that jump. So let me move these units away. I'm not going to be using them. And, and now if we jump nothing happens because we need to make sure this value is set to true. So let's do that one more time. And now looks like the character is working properly. It seems like the character is grounded. So now we can, um, when we move, the script for moving is activated because it's part of the move unit here. It activates the move animation. And then if we jump, uh, we also have the animation running, but we need to make sure that when we jump, we disable the is grounded state. So let's do that. Let's add it between here. So now when we jump, we need to hit the floor again to start the grounded animation. And uh, that is the basic movement of this platformer. Now our character is just moving and we're not actually following the character. So to enable that uh, for the camera to follow, there's another unit that is available in the demo, which is a camera follow. And as soon as you add that, the camera is going to be following the character wherever the character is going. Now, one thing about the camera follow, by default, it is using the late update. But since we are using a rigid body to move around, we can replace this on a late update to on fixed update. And that will create a smoother movement of the camera because it's going to be updating when the character is updating as well. So that's just a quick tip there. So we got the movement, we got the character movement. Now let's get those coins. So for the coins, we can use the if collide. And here we're going to be looking for coins. And whenever it's entered, we want to destroy game objects. So game object, destroy. So connect that. And it looks like um, the naming is actually a little bit different. So let's go to prefab, select a coin and see what 
tag I used. I used coin instead of coins. So coin, and now we can pick up that coin. Now, if we want to add uh, some uh, particle effects, which is one other thing that I have here, we can do that. Let's uh, do game object instantiate, and in our assets, let's look for pickup, and I have a pickup particle effect right here. Select that, and in here, we need to make sure that we add position. Let's get position of the coin that we just picked up. So after we have created that uh, effect, we can destroy that coin. And also in here, let's do game object uh, destroy with a time delay to destroy this uh, particle effect that we're creating. So let's give it a 0.2 seconds to play. And now let's see how that's gonna work. So first time the particle effect wasn't loaded, but after it looks like it's working. So there is our little platformer. Now we can also add sound effects, but for that we need to make sure we've stopped the game for now and select our character. And in here, let's add an audio source. I'll just leave it empty and we can disable play on awake. Now we can go in here and whenever we pick up a coin, we can play the audio source by using one shot and after that is done, we can continue with destroying. And the effect that we're gonna play is handle coins. So that's gonna trigger each time we pick up that coin. So we can also go into the hierarchy and add music here as well that can play in a loop. So another audio source. And for this one, we can specify that uh, game music, play on start, and now we can click play. And now we have some music and sound effect for picking up those coins. And we can also add effects for footsteps, but I'm not gonna be doing it in this part. If you have any questions, write those in the comments. And again, if you like these super units and you want more of them, you can get the full package and it's actually on Christmas sale right now. So hopefully you enjoyed making this little game with me. See you guys in the next one.